December 27th Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible Zechariah chapters 9 and 10 from the Old Testament An Oracle of the Word of the Lord Concerning the Land of Hadrach With its focus on Damascus The eyes of all humanity, especially of the tribes of Israel, are toward the Lord, as are those of Hamath, also which adjoins Damascus and Tyre and Sidon, though they consider themselves to be very wise. Tyre built herself a fortification and piled up silver like dust and gold like the mud of the streets. Nevertheless, the Lord will evict her and shove her fortifications into the sea. She will be consumed by fire. Ashkelon will see and be afraid. Gaza will be in great anguish, as will Ekron, for her hope will have been dried up. Gaza will lose her king and Ashkelon will no longer be inhabited. A mongrel people will live in Ashdod, for I will greatly humiliate the Philistines. I will take away their abominable religious practices. Then those who survive will become a community of believers in our God, like a clan in Judah, and Ekron will be like the Jebusites. Then I will surround my temple to protect it like a guard from anyone crossing back and forth so no one will cross over against them any more as an oppressor. For now I myself have seen it. Rejoice greatly, daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming to you. He is legitimate and victorious, humble and riding on a donkey, on a young donkey, the foal of a female donkey. I will remove the chariot from Ephraim, and the war horse from Jerusalem and the battle bow will be removed. Then he will announce peace to the nations. His dominion will be from sea to sea and from the Euphrates River to the ends of the earth. Moreover, as for you, because of our covenant relationship secured with blood, I will release your prisoners from the waterless pit. Return to the stronghold, you prisoners, with hope. Today I declare that I will return double what was taken from you. I will bend Judah as my bow. I will load the bow with Ephraim my arrow. I will stir up your son, Zion, against yours, Greece, and I will make you, Zion, like a warrior's sword. Then the Lord will appear above them, and his arrow will shoot forth like lightning. The Lord God will blow the trumpet and will sally forth on the southern storm winds. The Lord who rules over all will guard them, and they will prevail and overcome with sling stones. Then they will drink and will become noisy like drunkards, full like the sacrificial basin or like the corners of the altar. On that day, the Lord, their God, will deliver them as the flock of his people, for they are the precious stones of a crown sparkling over his land. How precious and fair! Grain will make the young men flourish, and new wine the young women. Ask the Lord for rain in the season of the late spring rains. The Lord who causes thunderstorms, and he will give everyone showers of rain and green growth in the field. For the household gods have spoken wickedness. The soothsayers have seen a lie, and as for the dreamers, they have disclosed emptiness and give comfort in vain. Therefore the people set out like sheep and become scattered because they have no shepherd. I am enraged at the shepherds and will punish the lead goats. For the Lord who rules over all has brought blessing to his flock, the house of Judah, and will transform them into his majestic war horse. From him will come the cornerstone, the wall peg, the battle bow, and every ruler. And they will be like warriors trampling the mud of the streets in battle. They will fight, for the Lord will be with them and will defeat the enemy Calvary. I, says the Lord, will strengthen the kingdom of Judah and deliver the people of Joseph and will bring them back because of my compassion for them. They will be as though I had never rejected them, for I am the Lord their God and therefore I will hear them. The Ephraimites will be like warriors and will rejoice as if they had drunk wine. Their children will see it and rejoice. They will celebrate in the things of the Lord. I will signal for them and gather them, for I have already redeemed them. Then they will become as numerous as they were before. 
Though I scatter them among the nations, they will remember in far off places. They and their children will sprout forth and return. I will bring them back from Egypt and gather them from Assyria. I will bring them to the lands of Gilead and Lebanon, for there will not be enough room for them in their own land. The Lord will cross the sea of storms and will calm its turbulence. The depths of the Nile will dry up. The pride of Assyria will be humbled and the domination of Egypt will be no more. Thus I will strengthen them by my power and they will walk about in my name, says the Lord. God, every time I think I have the whole not worshiping idols thing under control, (laughs) you show me another facet of what that actually means. In Zechariah 10, right at the beginning, ask the Lord for rain in the season of the late spring rains, the Lord who causes thunderstorms, and he will give everyone showers of rain and green growth in the field. And then the next uh, couple sentences, uh, the next verse talks about the household gods and how they haven't done anything. So you're basically telling the people, look, who are you going to go to for these important rains for your agriculture, for your food to grow? Are you going to come to me? Are you going to come to your gods? And I thought about that, you know, rain was incredibly important to them. And it's not that it's not important to us now, but we've gotten ways to control that a little bit better. But back then it was incredibly important to them. And so I thought about what is important to us. Well, we'll just say important to me because I can't generalize for everybody else. Um, Things like love and comfort and security information. I think about all these things that I seek out in my life. And if I don't seek them from you, then they have the potential of becoming an idol. I know if I'm in a relationship or for people out there who are married, their husband or wife can become an idol. And I know that freaks some people out, but if we put anything above you, that's pretty much the definition of, of an idol is, is we're putting them ahead of our worship of you. So in a relationship, we, we seek a lot of that security and comfort, or maybe in our friendship. Uh, even in those situations, we need to be going to you first with our situations, uh, seeking the answer from you. And it doesn't mean that you don't put people here on earth to help us with things, obviously. Uh, and friendships and relationships are very important to you. You talk about them through the whole Bible. But we've got to look at that balance. Are we always going to a human being for comfort? Are we always going to them for security? Are we always going to them for information and helping us? Or do we take all these things to you first and then allow that person to come into our life to help us with it? It's kind of interesting because it can be the exact same steps, but it's where our heart is when we do them, right? And I'm learning that more and more, uh, especially this year, as you unveil your word and your will and your glory uh, through the Bible. So I was thinking about, you know, other things that we do. One of the things that we do is when we get stressed out, we want to just kind of go away from everything else or take our mind off of things. I'm trying to think of all the words we use on Facebook, (laughs) right? Um, So what do we seek first? Are we in your word seeking peace and comfort and guidance? Or are we at the spa or at the bar or having sex with somebody? How are we responding to those things that we need in life or that we want in life? And are we going to, to you first for all of those things? Until, you know, studying Zechariah, I hadn't really thought of that facet of idol worship in, in all honesty. I had thought about the other ones, the kind of obvious ones, and how you can put people and relationships and money and status ahead of you. But I never thought of kind of this nuance of things that we seek uh, in daily life. Even reassurances, affirmations, confirmations, uh, encouragement. A lot of those things we go to other people or other things to provide that for us. Um, Some people go shopping, some people do drugs. You know, sometimes even people can find those things in ministry, but again, if we don't go to you first for those things, then getting those things out of ministry can technically become an idol for us. It's kind of fascinating how this is set up. Are we looking to you for 
all of our needs. Not just the ones that we think you can handle, but are we coming to you for all of our needs? Or are we coming to you for some of our needs and then going to these other worldly things to fulfill us? Again, I know for you it is a heart placement. What is coming from our heart? If we do ministry because it comforts us, then it's probably not really ministry. Uh, if we seek you first and ask you to show us how to use our gifts and you send us to a ministry, then that's a whole other thing. We'll probably still feel good about doing the ministry, but it's for a different purpose. God, I ask that you unveil those things to us. These kind of underlying things that we need to uncover to continue to grow in you, to continue to walk in the path of your will for us, and most importantly, for our lives to glorify you. These are, these are kind of the... <laughs> I almost want to say the shadow things, the things that we don't pay as close attention to because they're not as obvious. Just show us the idols in our lives, God. Not just the, the big, huge, obvious ones. Definitely show us those if we're still going after those things. But kind of these more subtle ones. Show us those as well. God, I don't want anything to be above you in my heart, in my desire to seek anything in this world. I want you to be everything. I want you to sit on the throne of my heart. I want you to guide my life. And I want my life to be lived for you. God, I pray all this in your son's name. Amen.